بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آنریبل ہیڈز آف اسٹیٹس اینڈ گورنمنٹ ڈی ایٹ سیکٹری جنرل السلام علیکم ایکسلنسیز آئی کانگریچولیٹ پرائم منسٹر شیخ حسینہ آن اسیومنگ اسٹیوڈ شپ آف ڈی ایٹ اینڈ کمینڈ پریزیڈنٹ اردوگان فار ایبلی اسٹیئرنگ دی آرگنائزیشن ڈیورنگ دا پاس فور ایئرز It is a pleasure for me to share my perspective on the summit's focus on building partnerships to harness the power of youth and te technology in a transformative world. The theme is extremely significant today. Excellencies, our world today is at a defining moment because of the interconnectedness and the economic, social, and environmental vulnerabilities created by this interconnectedness. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused a death of over 2.9 million people. More than 250 million people have become unemployed, have lost their jobs. Trillions of dollars were lost as a result of global economic contraction. The virus has taken a heavy toll on poor countries and poor in all the countries. Also, inequalities have been accentuated within the countries and between the rich and the poor countries. The developing countries are faced with the dilemma of not only saving people from the deadly virus, but also saving people from hunger. Today, the world boasts the largest number of young people in history, in human history. Even before the pandemic struck, around one-fifth of the global youth was unemployed and did not have the education and the skills to equip them, equip them for the 21st century. <clears throat> we owe our youth to turn this around. We have 550 million young population in D8 countries. Our youth has not only the potential to op optimize our opportunities, but also overcome our common challenges. They are entrepreneurs, business innovators, technology pioneers, educators, activists, artists, and journalists. We must create new opportunities for this predominant component of our population. Harnessing technology, promoting innovation, investing in Youth education, skills, and training is therefore an urgent imperative. We in Pakistan are pursuing these initiatives through programs such as Kamyab Jawan, Hunarman Pakistan, Youth Entrepreneurship Scheme, and Digital Pakistan. Excellencies, around a hundred years ago, our great poet philosopher, Ilama Iqbal, he said that the only thing permanent in this world is change. In a century since the times of Iqbal, the world has changed tremendously. The pace of change has intensified in recent times. The rate of change has become exponential. Information and technology breakthroughs are fast transforming science fiction of yesterday into today's reality. Only five years ago, the World Economic Forum had predicted that the fourth industrial revolution will fundamentally alter the way we live, work, and relate to one another. Today, as we meet on this virtual platform, already we can sense the arrival of this revolution. Excellencies, contemporary global challenges of a changing world are a moving target. No single country can address these complexities in isolation. Partnerships are essential. I am happy that in D8 we have a platform to work together for mutual benefit and win-win solutions. In our view, the D8 would do well to pay special attention to the following three areas while dealing with the rapidly transforming world. First, 
as net producers of primary global commodities, the D8 must conceive projects that harness technology for supply-side improvements with a special emphasis on efficiency and productivity. With cost of trans transportation and communications improving due to innovations, the D8 members must partner to keep pace with the logistics and global supply chains. Secondly, the D8 should brainstorm ideas to insulate its members from disruptions in labor markets due to technology and innovations. As automation substitutes for labor across the world, the labor-intensive economies of D8 face challenges of unemployment and social disruption. Thirdly, the D8 should call for COVID vaccine to be treated as a global public good, ensure equity, affordability, enhance production, and timely supply to save lives. We must push back against vaccine nationalism and undue export restrictions. The global vaccine manufacturing companies must either speed up production or share their technology and expertise with developing countries for adequate vaccine supply. Excellencies, 23 years ago, a shared vision motivated our countries to establish D8 to improve member states' position in global economy, diversify and create new, new opportunities in trade relations, enhance participation in decision-making at international level, and improve living standards. Today, D8, D8 is a grouping of over 1 billion people. A grouping of over 1 billion people with a combined GDP of $4 trillion. We possess two essential prerequisites for growth, resources and enterprising people. As part of our endeavors to realize the vision of D8 in these testing times, I propose the following five-pronged roadmap. One, we must mobilize financing and resources to recover robustly from the economic and health crisis induced by COVID pandemic. To address the, the, the unique economic and financial challenges faced by developing countries as a result of the pandemic, I have already suggested a five-point plan. This includes debt relief, creation and redistribution of special drawing rights, mobilization of climate finance, and especially uh, for the D8 leadership, eliminating illicit financial flows and return of stolen assets to developing countries. It was in this context that I called for a global initiative on debt relief last April. I invite the D8 members to consider this five points and join in advocacy for COVID-related relief measures. Two, we must take concrete actions to achieve the target of expanding intra-D8 trade from currently around $100 billion to $500 billion by 2030. It should include measures like simpli simplification of border procedures, enhancing institutional linkages, and operationalizing new initiatives. We welcome ideas like the D8 payment card, which would enable transactions in local currency, what President Erdogan was referring to. Three, the D8 should develop a youth engagement strategy focused on promoting cultural, educational, scientific, and business exchanges. Linkage, linkages should be established between educational institutions like scholarships, skill development, trainings, fellowships, joint research, and exchange programs for the youth, particularly in the field of science and technology. Four, technological development is a gateway to economic prosperity, particularly in the post-pandemic period when reliance on technology would be greater than ever before in human history. To remain competitive, 
we must purport, promote knowledge-based economies, increase expenditure on research and development, and focus on rapid digitalization. Pakistan has recently hosted the inaugural meeting of the D8 Network of Pioneers of Research and Innovation. Five, we should make D8 more relevant to the lives of our citizens by promoting food security, enhancing cooperation in health, holding joint sports events and helping each other during natural disasters. To achieve these goals, we need a high level of commitment and mobilization of financial resources by both developed and developing economies. Partnerships between governments, international financial institutions, businesses, and civil society are essential to leverage technology, innovation, and skills to enable every young person to have all opportunities to realize their potential. I'm confident that our collective wisdom and commitment will bring a new vigor to D8. I wish you all a blessed Ramzan and I thank you.